welcome to episode number 82 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting, spinning, sewing, weaving, basically all of the fiber crafts that I feel like. And I've been up to a few uh, recently, although I must say I have not really been sewing. And let's get right into why for now, because, um, well, uh, what I'm currently wearing is one of my uh, latest Agnes tops and um, I uh, told you in the most recent uh, episode uh, that I had made this but um, I couldn't show it because it was in the laundry. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with how the neckline on, on this one looks and the shoulders especially. Um, but one thing that I'm not really happy with is the amount of bulge that I'm getting on the sleeve. So I modified this Agnes and I've made several ones before. I think I maybe this might be the eighth or the ninth version I, I, I made for myself. So uh, quite a few. But lately I've been watching some videos about making a perfect fit for yourself. And um, one thing that I definitely wanted to modify was uh, make sure that the, the shoulder line was actually on my shoulders because usually it would be somewhere like here because uh, most parents would it will instruct you to like take your bust me measurement and then assume that you have a shoulder width to match. Well, um, apparently I don't. <laughs> apparently I have uh, uh, slimmer shoulders than uh, I have a bust circumference. So yeah, whatever. So uh, I had to modify the pattern, and uh, <laughs> it was quite a few sizes uh, difference. I think uh, my shoulders turn out to be like the size one and. Um, like my bust circumference is like size five in the pattern that I used. So <laughs> quite a steep uh, grading to do there. So I, th I feel like it, it worked out quite well on the body because I, I feel like in the previous Agnes tops that I made, if I would move around then uh, I would also drag around a lot of the fabric that is um, on my body, uh, which I don't really want. I mean, if I move my arms, then you know uh, the fabric around my sleeve can move. But uh, and obviously, like there's there's a little bit of movement going on here, and I don't think you can stop that entirely. Um, but uh, it could definitely be a little bit less <laughs> than uh, I had it in the past. However, um, I think actually this sleeve turned out better than this one, although maybe it's like here it's worse on the back and here it's worse on the front. But um, I, I do have like the arm circumference to need a bigger uh, sleeve size. So uh, I was a bit confused about how to grade that. So if any one of you guys have good tips for tutorials on how to make perfect fitting sleeves because I, I feel like there, there's a bit of a bulge here that I'm not quite happy with yet. So um, yeah, if, if I'm making another one, I want to make sure that it's going to be nicely fitting. And therefore I uh, have postponed my sewing for a bit. The only thing I've been doing in terms of sewing is basically sewing in labels, <laughs> name labels, name tags for uh, the clothes for my son because you know he goes to daycare with his clothes uh, as well and uh, there's a lot of tiny <laughs> folks around there so um, they might get clothes confused and I want to get his clothes back <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, we, we never really had any problems with that uh, also, if, if clothes went there in late. I have a feeling that we sometimes get back home more clothes than we sent him off with. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, that's basically it for the sewing adventure. Uh, the other thing that I'm wearing today and I'm going to put it back on is, um, is this uh, cardigan that I knit uh, quite a while back. And um, I improvised this pattern myself and I'm not really happy with it. I'm not going to publish it made some mistakes in it. Um, I don't like what the neckline is doing. I don't uh, like how much effort I put into putting the cables that you can barely see. I mean, there, there's a, a cable detail here and on the sleeve and I'm not sure. Did I put one on the back? I don't know. I'm not even going to check, but um, yeah, it did not quite turn out the way I wanted it to. So. Um, it's probably to do with the fact that this is silk mohair uh, yarn and um, yeah, it's just too too floppy to show up uh, stitch patterns uh, a lot. So I should not have gone for a pattern that um, 
that would look nice based on the stitch definition if you are using a yarn that typically does not give you a very nice stitch definition. Also, a mistake that I made as I purchased these very pretty buttons and I'm pretty sure that I uh, purchased them somewhere in Austria when we were on holiday there because that's where I knit this sweater. I, I think it's um, the yarn is from Sandness and it's their silk mohair yarn uh, and I purchased that when I lived in Sweden. Um, but I purchased these buttons and I really really like the color of these buttons uh, and, and the look of these buttons but they are too heavy for this cardigan so I should actually just take them off and put on something else but really um, like these buttons might be just as heavy as the entire card and that's not okay <laughs> you don't need buttons that weigh down your cardigan to that extent so uh, yeah Let's talk about projects that I'm a little bit happier about, um, some of my more recent finishes. Um, yeah, so where to begin? Uh, let's start with the projects that I've been working on uh, on the past episode already. So first of all, talking about sweaters that do not have labels in them, uh, I finished a sweater for Sven, uh, my son, and um, yeah, here it is. It's all finished. I don't even think he's fitted it yet because it's quite a heavy uh, yarn. It's a worsted weight um, sweater and I feel like it might just be a little bit too dense for him. Although it's finally getting properly cold these days. I think uh, yesterday was a day where it was like 6 or 7 degrees. That's Celsius. I don't know what that would be in Fahrenheit. Um, but um, yeah, it's definitely chilly in the mornings. So. Um, yeah, uh, it's finished. I uh, have not really blocked it yet and I hope that blocking it will also solve the problem of this... Well, I, I just saw, it, saw a spot where you could see it, but and now that I'm looking for it I can't see it. Well, here you can see kind of the stitches are a bit wonky and that's because that's where I shifted for the helical knitting. And it's going around in a big spiral around the body because I've always shifted and knit to a few stitches less. So it, there, there's stripe spiraling around the body of um, slightly wonky stitches that I don't really like. Um, I must say I really, I was really done with knitting the helical knitting when I had done the sleeves because um, the sleeves are around well I, I don't remember exactly but probably around 40 stitches and there was like 12 stitches every round that I wasn't knitting because <laughs> I was doing the helical knitting and um, you are slipping them obviously and it just felt so tedious because I felt like I was uh, slipping more than I was knitting and um, I do like to make some progress when I'm knitting so I was very much done with that and then um, I, I knit the sleeves first and then uh, finish the body and um, in the body it actually felt a lot better because uh, you have Quite a few more stitches so like it and you, you still skip 12 stitches every round but that's only 12 out of maybe 120 or something uh, instead of out of every 40 <laughs> so uh, that, that felt a lot better it felt like I was definitely making some progress I'm happy uh, that I uh, have been able to finish it um, I, I do think it's uh, quite funny looking with the different colors of uh, cuffs everywhere and that was actually necessary for this project because um, I was knitting this with leftovers actually of the blanket that I'm currently keeping on my lap here uh, because it's quite chilly so uh, anyway so uh, from three of the leftover colors I was making this sweater and then added the, the red uh, as a new skin um, and I, I just didn't have enough so I would have preferred to have all the dark blue um, cuffs but it just wasn't doable with the amount of yarn that I had left over and the point of finishing leftovers is not purchasing more of the same colors and maybe not even all of the colors would still be available at this point. So um, yeah, I'm quite happy that it's finished and it's out of um, Anel Malmedy uh, yarn which is uh, well one of my staples. I have knit quite a few projects with that yarn and it's um, not super soft, but definitely soft enough um, uh, yarn. I don't think it's specified what 
kind of wool it is but it's 100% wool and it's uh, 125 meters in a 50 gram bowl um, yeah and I, I've been knitting with this yarn for years and um, so far my experience has been good with projects holding up nicely and such so I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with that and it's done and there's another project that I've finished since last time and uh, it is my socks from the Patton's Scroy um, sock yarn. I, I'm, I'm not really sure that the, the, the name is complicated. I'm not really sure uh, what's the brand name. Like I, I always thought that Patton's Scroy was the brand and then it was their sock yarn but apparently it's something like Patton's is the brand and Croy socks is a, a specific type of sock yarn. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I really, really loved uh, um, knitting these socks. Uh, it, it, uh, the yarn was given to me as a friend and I've knit them on bamboo needles, needles that uh, were also a gift to me uh, by someone else. And uh, yeah, uh, they are just a, a little bit thicker than my average uh, pair of socks. Maybe not than uh, my color work socks, but for just a single color sock, uh, they are just a bit thicker and I hope therefore warmer uh, and uh, I have been feeling a bit chilly lately so I don't know <laughs> I can use a nice pair of warm socks um, like in the first sock right after I started the toe I came uh, across an end like a knot in the knitting and then uh, definitely uh, there's a clear color change happening here so uh, I wasn't too pleased with that but you actually get with the way that I knit socks because I, I knit uh, short row heel you can see like on, on the on the heel there's a nice gradient going from one color to uh, the next but on the fo foot you also get a bit of a line uh, separating uh, the color that you were working on before you started the heel and the, the color you have after the heel so uh, I, I wasn't too worried about um, about the line showing up there and uh, yeah, I, I feel like I've used up very much most of the skein, so uh, I'm pleased about that too because I, I just wanted to make sure that I would get as much sock out, <laughs> out of that uh, ball as I could because pattern scroll is not easy to to get around these parts or at least not as far as I know. If anyone has tips, <laughs> please tell me. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in the Netherlands, so uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, if you have shop suggestions for pattern scroll, uh, let me know because I'm in for a bit of thicker sock yarn. Although uh, I must say I am not specifically on the lookout for pattern scroll uh, sock yarn um, because my local yarn shop is now carrying thicker sock yarn as well, which I am super excited about. They uh, have a new Finnish brand and um, I've purchased some yarn, uh, but I'll get to that in probably in the next episode because I can't wait to cast on <laughs> uh, that yarn. Uh, I've purchased it and uh, yeah, once it's a project, I will share a bit more about it. Anyway. So then there is uh, the last knitting project that I've been working on um, since the last episode. So I finished a sweater for my son and, um, and then I had a look at the other sweaters that he had and um, it turned out that his Marius sweater was a bit too small for him. So I am knitting him uh, another one. This is going to be his third Marius sweater. So I knit one. Um, where all the, the red and the blue were reversed, uh, like uh, when I was pregnant with my son, uh, because we didn't know whether it was going to be a boy or a girl, and the traditional Norwegian color uh, is uh, blue for, oh, for the men and uh, white for the women. So uh, both my husband and I have this sweater as well in adult sizes. Um, my husband has, has one that's very similar t to this one with a drop shoulder uh, sleeve, and I have one with the yoke. Um, and uh, for, for my son, the previous two versions were uh, knit differently, which I improvised from the uh, f from the pattern because I felt like it would be better if the whole neckline was open over the shoulders as well, uh, so that I could uh, close it with buttons there. Because you know, babies and heads and through getting it through um, 
sweaters uh, might not be uh, your favorite match so uh, but I feel like he's grown up quite a bit so he can probably um, and deal with a neckline like this as well in uh, the sizes that I currently uh, buy for him uh, as well. Um, mo most uh, shirts and such don't really have uh, closures on, on the shoulders anymore so I feel like it would be okay for a sweater too. So um, this is the body all finished. Uh, it's knitting around and there's no way you're going to get this <laughs> your, your arms through now because uh, there's no armholes yet, so I will have to steek this uh, to uh, to get uh, armholes. So I first needed to to finish the sleeves to know exactly how deep I should cut for for the steek. So I haven't done that yet. Also, I haven't finished both of the sleeves yet. So the second sleeve I am currently working on, and uh, it's about this long. So um, I have a little bit to go before I can start the color work section. But it's. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a fast project. I mean, it's a, a still a, a tiny sweater compared to uh, um, an adult size sweater, even though this is a knit on, uh, well, smaller needles than I would might use for a sweater for myself. Um, not actually true, because I think the current cardigan that I'm knitting for myself is also on 2.5 millimeters or US one and a half, I, I think. And, uh, that's the size that I'm currently using uh, for, for this sweater as well. That is, uh, I was using the US 1 or 2.25 uh, millimeters for the cuffs. Then I'm using um, US 1.5 and uh, 2.5 millimeters for um, well the body of the um, of the sweater. And then for the color work section, I'm shifting one size up to 2.75. Which I think is a US too. Anyway, uh, the previous sweaters that I've knit for my son um, were uh, with the exact same yarn. This is Lamana Como, um, which is a superwash merino, but it's it has a little bit of a toothiness, uh, so it's very soft. So it, it it's not uh, toothy in, in the sense that it has hard bits in it, but um, it it uh, seems to grip in, into uh, the the yarn next to it a little bit better too. Um, to have the stitches stay in place and that works a little bit better for color work in my opinion. So um, yeah, I, I'm quite happy with uh, this yarn uh, for, for using it in color work. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm now knitting it on um, quite a bit larger needles because I felt like uh, that would create a dense enough fabric as it is. So uh, his third Mary sweater is uh, coming along just uh, fine and uh, I'm assuming that we can take some family pictures again next winter which would be nice. Um, then there has been another adventure um, this month um, with uh, my local spinning group. I went to um, a weaving course so uh, quite a few of us also have acquired some looms over the past few years and I, I have been weaving quite a bit already but we went for a weaving course and that's where I wove this scarf uh, and uh, yeah I, I don't know it's it, it's all knit uh, all woven in one day um, I will say that we did not have to warp uh, during the course it was already pre-warped um, uh, we had to uh, share some colors that we like so that there would be a, a warp that we would like enough to, to weave with. So I had sold uh, them that I, I liked the uh, color aqua and, um, and so there was definitely some light blue colors in the warp and I decided to add in some green and some yellow and some pink and I was definitely the slowest weaver there even though I had the most experience with, with weaving. So. I don't know exactly what happened there. I, I do think that my fabric is a little bit denser, so I beat down a little bit uh, more aggressive than the other ladies uh, I was weaving with. So um, that might explain uh, why I was slower, because um, if, if you have to simply do more picks, then um, yeah, it's, it's going to be slower than if, um, like, I, I probably need, like, I don't know, Say, say I would need 25 um, uh, weft threads 
in 10 centimeters, then they might only have needed like C20 or something. So, um, so I ended up with a little bit of a stiffer fabric. Uh, we got instructions for how to make tassels at the end, but I don't really like tassels. Uh, so I decided to just um, hem it because uh, I do like a hemmed scarf. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this uh, scarf because uh, the lady um, at, uh, at the weaving studio um, set it up with acrylic yarn because she says some people are allergic or sensitive to wool and don't like to work with that. Um, so they set up with uh, a yarn that's cotton and acrylic blend, but I am sensitive to ac acrylic. So um, yeah, that was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, but I'm sure that I will find someone who will love this scarf. So, uh, yeah. I'm not really sure uh, what to do with it. I, um, But I have not really been looking for someone to give it away to either because I wanted to show this on the podcast first. I also did one tiny bit of an accent with a, a, a pickup stick. So, or... or I didn't even use a pickup stick, but I, I did do something with flows here that I thought would look fun. Um, it was supposed to be a plain weave scarf because, you know, uh, beginner weaving course. Uh, but it was a very enjoyable course and uh, I, um, even though I felt like maybe it's a bit silly to, to go to a weaving course if you already know the basics of how to weave, uh, but it was definitely helpful because I feel like um, in the weaving that I have been doing at home, um, I tend to uh, weave a little bit too tight so the edges would curl in, a, well not curl but be pulled in a, a little bit too much um, and I have been continuing weaving on the project that I have on the attic upstairs but I'm not going to show it because it, it doesn't really look that different from what it looked like the last time that I've shown it uh, but I will insert a picture probably. Um, but I, I've noticed that uh, my edges are um, much more straight than they were in the past. They were just pulled in a little bit too much for my liking. And um, so in terms of tensioning, I have uh, learned some t tips and tricks. Um, also in terms of how to control that your weaving is going straight, because you want to have, like if the warp lines are straight vertical lines, you want to have your weft go in a straight, a straight horizontally, but uh, I would, tend to have like a slight diagonal uh, there so um, that, well uh, it's quite obvious that it had to to do with the, that, that you might pull harder on one side of the of the loop of the paddle than on the other when, when you're beating but uh, yeah it's, sometimes it's just good to to hear about these things uh, from someone who is more experienced <laughs> than, than you in weaving and uh, yeah that was really helpful also like I would not have thought to look up how to solve these issues um, before and now there was just someone looking at my uh, weaving and uh, telling me like hey you can do it like that um, that was helpful <laughs> so I have also been enjoying weaving uh, a bit more since I've uh, come home but I have I think I've completed another two sheets of paper <laughs> in, in my weaving and I think my sheets are like 45 centimeters um, wide um, but there's some overlap so probably around 40 centimeters which would be around 16 inches of weaving but I, I think I warped for, for four meters which is like four and a half yards of fabric so um, and I do like this project too much to cut it off the loom so I, I do want to finish it but I'm actually craving to uh, weave something with a little bit of thicker yarn because this is uh, woven on a 30 10 uh, heddle 30 dense heddle I think or seven and a half I don't know 30 uh, dense in, in 10 centimeters so that's probably seven and a half in, in an inch or something um, anyway uh, and the uh, thing that I'm working on currently upstairs is the 50 uh, 10 heddle so it has a lot more uh, warp threads which you don't really notice while you're weaving but uh, because I'm using the same yarn uh, it's both whole scarn that I'm using there um, it, it also takes a lot longer to finish a certain length of weft because um, like if you are weaving, weaving a balanced plain weave which I'm trying to um, 
then you should also have about 50 <laughs> ends in, in, the, in the weft, so it's a big project anyway, <laughs> but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, and I've also met up with the spinning group again, and uh, silly me, I forgot to bring my um, my flyer when I was uh, going there. But I uh, did think that I um, had my bobbin, uh, my third bobbin of single ply, almost finished to such a point that I took a spare project with me. So I have been working with my spindle, my drop spindle, uh, for a bit, and I have definitely made some progress here. And this is some fiber that I purchased from Spin City UK. And I have no clue what it's called anymore, but I think it's maybe something like Meteorite colorway. Um, and it's, it's a blend of, I don't know, I think there's, there's some silky type yarn, but I, I think it's uh, artificial silk. I don't think it's actual silk. And uh, some wool, and I, I don't know exactly what what the blend is, but um, and there, there's some sparkle in there as well, so that's probably Selena. Um, and uh, I have definitely made some progress on on this project, and I'm I'm pretty close to finishing it. So I've been enjoying working on that because I kind of uh, just want to have this product finished because uh, I started this in 2019, so, so uh, it's about time, <laughs> you'd say. And it's living in my gorgeous product uh, bag that I've gotten as a gift a while back. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice and, and tall project bag, for uh, perfect for keeping a spin wheel, I think. So uh, yeah, that's almost finished, but I have also been uh, uh, working on my regular spinning uh, project. So I finished three plies and I'm uh, making a three ply arm. Oh, makes sense, right? Uh, making three single plies and then uh, spinning a three ply yarn. I have not uh, wet finished uh, this yarn yet, um, but I was planning on uh, making a three ply so that I could make myself a nice cable-y uh, sweater. It's a traditional uh, three ply and uh, I have, well, uh, three uh, skeins finished and, and uh, um, a fourth one on, on the bobbin. This is definitely going to be a bit of a smaller one. There's two like full bobbins here and then a smaller one where I run out of yarn for one of the uh, plies and then uh, a third one where I readjusted uh, one of the yarns to, to another bobbin. So uh, I have quite a bit finished. I do also still have a, a bit of the braid left that is still unplied but I only have four bobbins so uh, if you have three in use for a single ply you can, you can use the fourth one to make uh, a, a three ply uh, yarn and uh, that's about as much uh, as you can do so once they are full uh, you have to stop spinning singles um, but uh, now I have empty bobbins so I can continue spinning um, the rest of my yarn onto the, the bobbins and make it into a single ply and then ply that obviously um, but it's going to take a while uh, now. The, the, th the thing that I don't really like, like I know that it can change slightly after uh, wet finishing it, but I don't think it's going to ch change much. Um, I now have around 75 meters uh, in 100 grams, which is not that much. And I only have 500 grams. So it's the yarn is definitely a bit heavier than I uh, was aiming for. And I'm like, this was going to be my nice and cabley white sweater, but I'm not sure if I'll have enough to make a nice and cabley sweater for myself out of this yarn. So I could maybe make one for my son, but I really want one myself. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if this is going to be enough, but I'll, I'll have to um, browse through Ravelry and also measure what what's the, the final number of yards or meters that I end up with and then then uh, search for a pattern. Maybe there are cable sweaters that just don't take up as much yarn because it's a thicker yarn so maybe it, it just uses a lot less meterage than if I were to use a thinner yarn. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not, not convinced that this is enough to be a sweater's quantity for me. Which saddens me <laughs> a little but uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Anyway, 
I'm not about to re-spin it all because uh, I, I feel like uh, spinning takes enough time as it is so if you end up with yarn that's a little bit different than what you were aiming for then you should just look for a different project to make with um, it's totally fine if you feel differently about this but uh, yeah I personally think that I've put enough effort in making this so if this is what it wants to be then um, like if it w wanted to become this yarn then uh, that's fine by me <laughs> I'll look for a project that works with that um, I, I kind of wish that I had purchased a bigger braid now but I already purchased a 500 gram braid which felt like definitely enough to knit a sweater for me but <sighs> apparently not <laughs> anyway now let's just see if it's definitely not enough before I, I read too much about that I think that's everything that I've had to share with you so uh, if you have some feedback on the sleeve cap uh, issue that I have please let me know and um, if not then I hope to see you all again soon um, I don't know exactly when the next podcast episode will be because uh, the first weekend of December is Sinterklaas weekend which is uh, a, a Dutch holiday uh, if you're unfamiliar with it um, it's a guy who brings presents for children and it's definitely a party that uh, that we celebrate uh, here especially now that we have a child so um, yeah I'm kind of looking forward to it, but it also means that uh, we are going to celebrate this with, with a family and it means uh, being away for the weekends and that means less time to record and edit a podcast. So I'm not really sure when it's going to happen next time. And I think the first two weekends of December are going to be busy. So I might shift to the end of November, but I also might just be late somewhere in December. Who knows? We'll see what happens. So, um, but probably before Christmas, that should be too long. <laughs> anyway, so I um, hope you all have a lovely time. I wish you uh, uh, lots of nice knitting and sewing and spinning and whatever fiber crafts that you feel like. Uh, I hope you can, can spend a lot of time with that. And uh, I hope to see you again, again soon. Bye!